sitting here. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you managed to prize him away from your clutches, Carolyn. He's made it into the studio. Thanks. So. Come back okay. soon. I tell you, she'll be running down to get you. She'll be ambushing you on the way out there, sure. I can tell you. She'll have a net. <laughs> Oh, she's got all embarrassed. Sean Bean is, of course, best known for his tough roles as an Irish terrorist in Patriot Games, 006 in GoldenEye, you remember, and TV sold oh, yeah. sharp, who could forget that? Well, he teamed up with gritty director Nick Love. The result was always going to be a pretty macho affair. Yes, Outlaw hits the screens this Friday, centering around a group of men let down by a failing legal system, and they decide to take the law into their own hands as a vigilante mob. Before we talk to Sean and Nick, and I think Sean's still recovering, actually, let's take Take a quick look at the film. Never mind, Brian. Is everything okay at home? Yeah. Well, then why'd you come here? It's just... I don't know. I don't see the point, sir. You know, being over there, then coming home. It's almost worse here. You're a soldier, Brian. It's your job. What do you want? Sympathy? No, but I want to do something, you know? I just want to be another face in the crowd. Otherwise, what was I doing out there? I want to... I want to be remembered. Well, uh, Sean and Nick are here now, as we see. And, Sean, you play uh, a soldier who's come back from, from service and, and finds sort of a different Britain to how you left it. It is a very, very violent film, isn't it? Any uh, qualms yes, about uh, your part? <laughs> it is a bit violent, <laughs> I should Just say. I, I found it, I mean, I'll be honest with you, all the sort of bone crunching moments mm. and set to a soundtrack, I, I find it quite a difficult watch. Yeah, Did you have any qualms is. at all about the role? No, I didn't really. I mean, uh, I suppose one of the first thing, I, I mean, that, that attracted me was working with, uh, with, with Nick, you know. Uh, because uh, I think he, uh, the, the films that he make are very unapologetic and, uh, you know, and, and very realistic. And, uh, you know, it's not very often you get that. They're not mm. made to a format. They, they, they are very, very passionate films. And so that was a big attraction for me. And the part was, uh, you know, uh, very interesting in, in, in terms of its complexity and, and, and the, the emotions and, uh, and the traumas that this, this, this guy goes through when he returns. It, it, it's a man with some real war. mental demons, isn't it? Yeah, he's going through a lot of, uh, a lot of problems, you know, he's, uh, he's very mixed up, he's not, uh, I mean he's a, a kind of natural born leader in the sense that he's, a, he's an ex-para, but at the same time he's almost going through a mental breakdown uh, during the period of the film and he's not, he's not saying this is what we do and this is not what we do. I mean, there's various times that he, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing uh, and he's just trying to get through it as he, as he sees best and he meets a group of people um, who are like-minded people who, who, who have suffered injustice and trauma and brutality and been victimised, gone through all the proper channels, the, uh, the, the judicial system and the police and have, have had no, no uh, sort of recompense for that and they decided mm -hmm. to do something about it, basically. Yeah, Nick, you it. said this is a film that you're most proud of. Yeah, the films that you've done. Yeah. Why is that? Because um, I think that my other films, you know, like The Football Factory and The Business, they were more just lads films, you know, they were, they were playing straight to sort of one, one audience, which is young males, and I just think that Outlaw's got, I mean, it is uncompromising, it is brutal, but it's got a very strong political and social conscience, and I think that, you know, that's probably why I'm proud of it, because but I'm just... Saying political and social conscience is the core of the film, and the violence that naturally flows from that. Well, I think, the, I, mean, no, I mean, you know, I'm getting, as ever, I'm getting sort of drawn over the hot coals, the amount of violence in the film, and... You know, the bottom line is, if you're going to make a film about people that are desperate enough to take the law into their own hands, you have to show how difficult it is for them to do that. And so therefore it has to be, it, it's a violent world. You know, that, like Sean said, they all suffer in brutality. But it's a fine line, isn't it, between depicting violence and, and glorifying it. And, and I suppose the risk you take as a director is as soon as you start setting it to a sort of racy soundtrack and then you hear the sound effects of the sort of the teeth smashing, the bone crunching. Yeah, but there is no, there is, I mean, there's very purposely no racy soundtrack in Outlaw. And, mm. and, and, you know, the football factory was very much set to a racy soundtrack and, and was very much playing to one audience because of that. Outlaw's a much more sober film. I just, it, 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 I mean, it's probably actually less screen violence in Outlaw than there is in the football factory. It's, there's a feeling of violence in Outlaw. There's always bad, something bad's about to happen, I think, which is probably the most disarming thing about the film. Let, let's have another look at another clip from the film when uh, the vigilantes are briefing meeting when they're just getting together. Why have you come here? To learn how to fight. 
to Zoom. Ilya said you'd teach us how to fight. I can't teach you how to fight. Because you already can. It's already in you. Where are you going, Munro? I can't do this. Sorry to hear about your wife. So your character is basically teaching people who've, who've seen violence, who've been subject to violence, yeah, like, how sure. to be vigilantes. That's, he's, that's he's, sort of, he, he's, he, uh, he's been through it, you know, the, the case I played Danny Bryan, so he's been through all, all that kind of violence and he's seen it. And uh, these guys are unfamiliar with violence. I mean, you've got um, Lenny James there, who plays, the, uh, uh, who plays a very successful uh, black barrister. Mm -hmm. Uh, who's been victimised and bullied and intimidated uh, by a gang of thugs, uh, who's not used to violence in his life. It's not, I, I don't think many people are, you know, and it, it's not, I, I don't, you know, I think it's a great thing to get used to, personally. But, I mean, these people come together, and I'm just trying to demonstrate that they do have something in them, that they can stand up and fight back. I mean, I don't think it's a, a film that advocates um, no, I mean, vigilantism, it, 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 but, I mean, way, it is uh, saying, look, you, you know, you've got to do something about this. You know, they just walk away and forget it and let these bastards get away with yeah. it. I mean, it's, I mean, or you do something wish... about it. No, I mean, it's, it, it, no, it's important to say as well that, I mean, you know, the film's called Outlaw and it feels like a vigilante movie. Um, it, there's only actually 20 minutes of the film where they're together as a posse. Um, and, and they go and take, you know, commit acts of retribution. But, you know, as you see, you've seen the film, you know, the first kind of 45 minutes of the film is about how their lives intertwine, how they, you know, how their paths start to cross. And so it's very much the, about the characters and what they're going through as opposed to an out-and-out -out vigilante movie. Mm -hmm. I think vigilante is a very easy title to sort of put on it because it's about people taking the law. <coughs> yeah. It's actually a revenge movie. Okay. But, but it's called Outlaw and it's out... It's out tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, okay. Thanks very yeah, much for coming in, Nick. Thank, Thank you, Sean. Nice to see you both. I just see Carol Kirk. We see that yellow coat just outside. <laughs> She's waiting for you, Sean. <laughs> yeah. You thought that film was tough. Why don't you try and get past that, Carol? <laughs> <laughs> She's lovely. You love her, She's honestly. Yeah. Um, uh, after